So continuing my journey with the Arduino Uno Q, which is both a single board computer and a microcontroller board, now I've come to the part where I'm talking about how you program it. Now I've already done a video about a desktop tour showing you what the single board computer part is like, and also did a quick unboxing video as well. In this video, I want to tell you all about how you program it using the Arduino IDE and the new piece of software called the Arduino App Lab. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's dive in. So you can program this board using the traditional Arduino IDE. I won't go too much into this now. I'm assuming you have some knowledge about how you program an Arduino. And as with other Arduino boards, you do need to add it to the IDE. You also need to add in any libraries you need. For example, if you want to control that matrix LED, that needs to be added. And then you just program it just like you would any uh, Arduino, really. Uh, however, one big difference, in fact, there are two. The first one is because of the unique architecture of the uh, Uno Q, and we'll talk more about that in a minute, you can't just use the serial object like you used to before to display uh, data on the uh, serial monitor. You have to use a new object called the monitor object. And I'll talk more about my experience with that a little bit later in the video. I said there were two issues, and the second issue is that the microcontroller part doesn't actually boot up until the Linux part is fully booted. In my previous video, I suggested that the animation that is shown on the LED matrix actually demonstrates that the microcontroller is actually up and running in an instant. That's actually not true, I was mistaken. The microcontroller part doesn't actually come into life until the Linux part is fully booted. And I suppose the reason for that is, is that this board is designed to be a complete system. It's not two things just stuck together. So there's the microcontroller, there's the single board computer, and you can't just stuck them together. They act as a whole. So both parts of the system need to be booted for it to be a fully working system. And just to demonstrate this, I have the blinking LED uh, sketch running. And if I boot up the board, the LED doesn't blink until the Linux part is fully booted. So what does that mean? There's this unique uh, architecture with these two parts. Well, there is a bridge that allows the two different parts to communicate. So the Arduino Uno Q uses remote procedure calls to exchange data between the Linux part, that's on the Qualcomm processor, and the real-time part on the SMT32 microcontroller. And it allows one processor to invoke transparently calls on the other. And they give you a library called the bridge library that allows these two things to communicate. So the idea is like this, there's an MPU side, which is the dragon wing processor that runs the high level services, and it can remotely invoke microcontroller functions. And on the microcontroller side, and this is interesting, it's now running the Zephyr real-time operating system. Uh, and so that's different to other uh, Arduino boards, although this has always been an option. Uh, basically, if you just want the, your blinking LED, way back in the day, it would just be a simple loop that might just, you know, it would just go round and round and blink the LED. Now you've got a full real-time operating system, and that's because it's listening and communicating over this bridge with whatever it needs to happen from the processor side, from the Linux side. So you get the microcontroller running R, this RTOS, and then it is able to uh, do what it needs to do, including having remote procedure calls come in from the other side. So what's that look like in a diagram? Well, here's your Arduino board. Here we've got an LED connected up, and so we've got the Dragon Wing processor running uh, Linux, and you've got the uh, microcontroller running an Arduino sketch, uh, and then you've got this bridge, this communication way of these two things to talk to each other. And all the software is provided for this bridge, so one side can talk to the other. It's not just pushing back and forward data, like here's a five or here's a seven back, but it's full RPC. So the way you program this, rather than using the traditional Arduino IDE, you now use a new piece of software called the Arduino App Lab. It's a visual development environment for the uh, Uno Q board, comes with pre-built modules, which they call bricks, and including AI modules. So there are 
bricks for things like uh, you know controlling um, uh, you know the cameras and then do AI models for doing object recognition so they really are aiming for some very sophisticated stuff here so it acts as an IDE for the Linux side and as an IDE for the microcontroller side and it is open source so here's what it looks like and this is the examples tab and you've got loads and loads of different examples all the different things as I say look classifying images there so you can do kind of some AI stuff there's loads of object detection objects and Im images again then there's a whole bunch of other things you can do and we're gonna look at this one blink led with user interface now i showed you this picture before so here's our led here are the two processors now on this side it runs a python script so this is important so you're writing this side in python okay and then you write this side as an arduino sketch and then here's the full picture now so what we've got is we've got a web browser page being served by the linux a portion okay a web ui and it just basically gives us a button here that we can press there's wi-fi so you can serve this page over wi-fi this is all done by the linux side and then once you want to do something it then talks to the uh, microcontroller and it turns that led on or off so here's the code here's the arduino microcontroller side so there's the pin that you want to set for the uh the led it's the built-in led in this case okay but here's the, the new stuff you start up this bridge you initialize it and then you say it can provide as a remote procedure call set led state and look down here here is set led state which is a function inside of your sketch so that means now that the linux part can call set led state and it will call this function here inside the microcontroller and we can see all this does is do a digital write which is basically a way of turning on or off the gpio pin in this case turning on or off the led and on the python side you've got a, a standard python script but you can see here there's bridge.call that's the important thing i wanted to underline bridge.call set led state and then you can set the state on or off and the rest of the stuff here is uh, stuff for getting the user interface up and running uh, and that's pretty uh, easy to run as well so python with a user interface and also it can uh, send uh, messages over the bridge to the microcontroller so what's my overall impression well i suppose it's one of frustration because it's a unique idea and for it to really succeed, it has to be seamless and completely smooth. You're not just dealing with a microcontroller, you're not just dealing with a single board computer, you're not even just dealing with a single board computer that can kind of just talk or program a microcontroller as if it was connected via USB, they are integrated together. And therefore, if it's not smooth, it's gonna to lead to frustration. And that's what I'm sensing at the moment. The new Arduino App Lab is really a work in progress. I'll give you something, an example, a simple example. I made a project and I thought, right, I'd like to take that source code and back it up, or I'd like to take that source code and copy it to my laptop. And I sort of tried to find out where there are files stored. Where are they on my hard disk? I could, I did a whole search of them. I couldn't find them. Where are they? You know, and uh, you expect just a little show folder, you know, somewhere. It doesn't come up. And so you're kind of like scratching your head going, and this is just simple ABC stuff. Another example is that monitor object that allows you to send things to the serial port. Now, if I run App Lab on the SBC itself in the Linux part, then I can get the serial output coming up uh, in the application. But if I run it on my PC and connect over USB to the uh, Uno Q, then I don't get any output at all. So I wasn't even able to do any simple debugging or any simple test because I couldn't see any output over this new monitor object. Maybe it's my mistake, maybe I've not done something right, but I've tried quite a lot. Maybe it's a bug, maybe it doesn't work. I don't know, maybe it can't be done. But it did work when it was running on the Linux part, as I said, on the board itself. But as soon as I did it remotely over the PC over a USB cable, I couldn't get it to work. So kind of things where you're kind of like going oh come on let's get this to work because the potential here obviously is quite large okay so that's it for this video i've got one more video coming up in this series and that is to compare the uno q with the raspberry pi not just the raspberry pi the latest one the raspberry pi 5 but going back to the raspberry pi 4 the raspberry pi 3 the raspberry pi 0 just to see what you can get in terms of processing power ram and of course cost 
to see where this board fits in a larger ecosystem. So if you want to find out all about that, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I drop that video. Well, I really do hope you enjoyed this look at programming the Arduino Uno Q. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.